that way I didn't have to worry about where I was going to go and things like that. I could just live my normal off-season life, so it was perfect. Now, I know, Nate, your off-season probably wasn't as normal as past ones because uh, yeah. Nate's Woo! not taken, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Nate got married. <laughs> I was wondering, when I thought of that question, I was wondering, now, are folks going to cheer or are they going to boo when I say that? That was the expected response. But congratulations, Nate, a married man. And if you'd be so kind to share just a little bit, where did the wedding take place? How did it go? I married my beautiful wife, Kate. Um, I met her in the city three years ago, actually during the Fan Fest weekend. Um, Woo! single ladies, there's my, uh, hope. Woo! Chase the Our former pitcher, Alex Hinshaw, his wife played college basketball with my wife at San Diego State. So they introduced me to her and... Uh, we got married in Dallas, Texas, I, so I had to spend a month and a half in Texas, which was interesting. I, I missed home a lot, but I spent the first month out here. Uh, my foot's healed now, so I'm good to go. Woo! Got married um, in early December, took a, it was an amazing wedding, um, everything went perfect, and then we went to Tahiti for honeymoon, so got some time on the beach, and now I'm back in Scottsdale getting ready for the season. All right. Well, it looks like we have our first question. This is Cody Arcane, be our intern. Woo! If you're nice to him, you might get to ask the next question. Hi. We were huge fans of the franchise. I have them on tape. We still watch them over and over. I want to know your perspective. How did you feel about those cameras just on you at all times in your personal business? <laughs> Anyone, feel free to jump in. Uh, you know, actually, they did a really good job. You know, one of the things that Showtime did is they contracted... Major League Baseball actually did the filming, and so they kind of understand a little bit about the rules of a clubhouse, a little bit how we like to, when we come home from a road trip or in, the, in our personal lives, and so they asked permission. Uh, if, if we said no, they said fine, you know, so we had to give them permission into those areas, especially in our families, and they kept it pretty professional, pretty short, and we actually, I, I actually enjoyed those guys. I made a couple friends, you know, out of the deal with, with the camera guys and the, and the producing guys, so I thought they did a great job, and I, I was... Plenty comfortable with them. Nate, Javier, either of you guys want to weigh in on that one? Well, you know, I, I guess uh, Jeremy pretty much nailed it there. I mean, that was it was everything had to be cleared through the players, so it wasn't any, anything you saw in there wasn't just uh, uncut, unedited kind of stuff. So, you know, I think they did a great job. They really did try to stay in the background of many many other things. Um, it was a great experience. I don't think anybody uh, had a bad time with it. Um, but again, I'm not Buster Posey or. Uh, you know, Brian Wilson or any of the guys that uh, they're going to be following. But, um, you know, I think it was one of those things where everybody enjoyed it, but we're kind of happy that it's not happening again. <laughs> we were all happy that we got to get a little peek inside the Giants uh, clubhouse, weren't you guys? Woo! Franchise. All right, so we've got another question back here. And then I'll come over here. Don't worry. Breathe. Breathe. Hi. <laughs> um, sorry. But um, I want to say Javier Love is my favorite player. Holla! <laughs> a lot, so I just really want to show you that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're looking at me. Okay. <laughs> um, so, hold on, hold on. Ha Javier, is this your younger uh, brother? Uh, I, I went ahead, I paid him to did come out. Did you pay out. him? <laughs> How much did he pay you? So I need some support? <laughs> Nothing. I just, anyways, okay, so, love as an apple, you guys are my top two favorite players. Um, I think oh, we're in Jersey. <laughs> I, got, I got yours in black at home. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but um, so I know you guys have a lot of service time under your belt now, and I was wondering what you guys were thinking of doing after um, you, you're done playing, because I know you guys do really great interviews. I love watching you guys, so I don't want to see you guys disappear because I really, really, really admire you guys. <laughs> Wow, I mean, that's, that's really sweet. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if we're hanging around Crook and Pipe at some point in time, I have to retire, right? I don't know. Well, they were up here before you guys, and they did actually shout out your two names. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe we'll uh, enter them a little bit and then uh, slowly bump them off. I don't know. What's up? I have no idea. I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, I, think I'm gonna, I do a lot of public speaking, so I'll probably continue to do that a little bit. And then I do a lot of fighting for injustice, so I want to continue to do that. Woo! And if 
things went well, maybe I'll take some coach job or something. So I'll be out before Hobby probably. But uh, uh, no, it, it'll be fun. I'll, do, I'll, I'll stay in the public speaking aspect of things, yeah. All right, I'm going to go down here. These young ladies have a couple questions. Um, speaking of your charity work, do you remember um, the food drive at Sequoia High School on December 3rd? I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. My organization went down with, uh, came down from Spokane, and we got the package 136,000 meals uh, with these awesome students, and we sent it to Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, so it was a good job. They did awesome, man. It's great. Sequoia High Girls. All right. Good job. Right he's going to make his way through. Don't step on anybody. i uh, got a question for Javier, actually. Um, you know, playing in Boston, I know they're a big baseball town. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were there for the World Series there. How do you compare the, the two World Series and how it was over there compared to here when we won it? Uh, well, I mean, again, I've been fortunate to win two, and uh, Boston was great. I loved it. I thought it was a great town, great baseball town, but uh, San Fran really, this was probably more memorable for me, for sure, I think. Bringing the first title to, to a town, uh, you know, there before then, it was obviously New York and stuff, so being able to win it here and do the parade and the turnout, I mean, this was by far the best, the best uh, experience I've had so far. So, are you saying that San Francisco is better than Boston? I think yeah! That's, what that's exactly Woo! what I'm saying. Fact. Or Nate, <laughs> have you ever been to Rags Coffee House in Venetia, California? And if not, it was your identical twin. <laughs> I have not. I don't spend too much time in Venetia. <laughs> yeah, I guess I gotta get into drinking coffee. I haven't picked up the uh, fad yet. Okay. Yeah? Are you guys coffee drinkers? Oh, oh. This guy's at Starbucks. I mean, I kind of live on it. I could have a coffee oh, yeah. IV. But I'm going to shout out. I, I'm a Starbucks guy, but anybody from Calistoga, man, that, that broom there, that bean company up there, Calistoga Ranch, coffee is phenomenal. Man, really good. It's really good. So if anyone wants you to guys send notice the Christmas product, presents. Yeah, you got to notice the product placement. If you watch the franchise again, Jeremy might turn the Starbucks thing. And, uh, it's all about product placement. When you, when you try to get to sponsor the mermaid, yeah. it worked, but... Good track. I think we've got a question back here. Uh, I'm a big Nate Sherholtz fan. Thank you. I tried to get a Nate Sherholtz jersey, but my brother got me a posy one for Christmas. It was really nice. Yes! Uh, so I wanted to ask you how your right foot's doing it after that year. I'm healthy. It was, it was really frustrating uh, just the way last year ended, especially after the year before. We had such high expectations. But, you know, for me, it was a restless six weeks of, you know, watching games. But, you know, by October, I was healthy. I was coming down here. I lived in, um, in San Francisco for the month of October, and I was running stadiums here and conditioning already. So I'm good to go. I'm excited. Actually, for Jeremy, um, I know you do a lot of uh, you're basically the um, liaison to Ryan Stowe, and I was wondering, in your per uh, personal opinion, how he's doing, and did he really call his speech therapist a cool chick? Yeah, yeah, he really did. You know, I actually got to hang out. I was very fortunate to hang out with him yesterday. I went down to San Jose and sat with him for about an hour, uh, and I was in there. <clears throat> he was just getting done with therapy, and he's you know kind of very very slow, obviously, but at least he's moving around a little bit. And, uh, he can't walk yet by himself, but he's, he's able to move. And I got to sit outside with him. We went out, it was a nice day, so him and I just sat outside at a table with his dad and sister. And we were just talking, and sometimes he would answer me, and sometimes he'd just shake his head. It's, it, it wears him out. It, he gets really tired of even doing all that. He's at four or five hours of therapy a day. Then he does speech therapy. And so finally, his speech therapist came in, and I said, Brian, I said, hey, how do you like your speech therapist? And he kind of just looked at me and goes, yeah, she's a cool chick. <laughs> you know, so it's good, man. He's, he's very aware, and, and uh, it was just a great time. I'm so excited to see. I saw him right after, and it was very traumatizing for even myself. And then to see what he's, what he's, how he's come along, how far he's come along. The family's been such a powerful, um, they've been such powerful people of hope. It's been amazing. I, I was really excited. This is uh, for all three of you guys. Um, with the acquisitions that we made this year, and from the other teams in division, who do you think is the biggest uh, competition? 
biggest NL West competition? Yes. We ask in a division. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing with Melky and, and Angel in the outfield. I think, you know, they bring a new dynamic to the team and to the offense. Uh, you know, we need more speed, and I think that, you know, they're going to be a great complement to the lineup. Um, as far as other teams in our league, I think Arizona's going to be tough. They've got a lot of good young pitching, and they've kind of bolstered their lineup, too. So I think that that's probably going to be, uh, in my opinion, you know, the toughest team to beat. Javier, Jeremy. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think uh, Arizona is the team to beat. Um, as far as actually, we're the team to beat. But <laughs> there you go. That's what you guys want to hear. You know, the Rockies made a lot of moves. The Dodgers seem to be signing everybody under the sun with money I don't know where. So I, I really think the Diamondbacks are probably the team. And then uh, you know, with Melky coming on board, I got a chance to play against him when he was with the Yankees and stuff. And the guys. He's, a, he's got the chance to be a five-tool, pretty special player for us, so that's pretty exciting. And then Pagan, wait till you see this guy run a little bit. He's, he's, I, everybody misses Andres Torres, I do too, but I tell you what, Pagan is, we're not, we're not losing a whole lot there. The guy's bringing just as much energy, if not more, so if that's believable, I don't know. Uh, but it, it'll be exciting. We'll have a little more uh, team speed, so it'll be fun to watch. All right, I have a question for me. Uh, it's my 21st birthday today. Happy birthday. So I know you're marrying Nancy, so you can't take me out for a beer, so I was wondering if you could at least sign my hat. Yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> okay, but as far as autograph questions go, I'm going to quell it right there. Aww. I know that. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's all downhill from here. Oh! Right? Yes. I mean, it all gets better. Did I say downhill? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just want to ask you guys, just as this goes on, off season. What did you guys do during the off season? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I go home up north, so I hope I don't offend anybody. I, I hunt, uh, so I do a little bit of. What do you hunt? Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> but I had I had I had to shoot a bear, but he was attacking me. Uh, and then I had a couple deer come my way too on top of that so I had to shoot them too but that's just because they were attacking I was defending myself did you eat them? I did and I cooked them and cut them with a really sharp knife <laughs> yeah. Can I yeah. Woo! Yeah, it's good we're good. Okay, we're good we're good I actually used an extra sharp one just to prove I could do it uh, and then you know, I just hang out with my family I got two boys um, that I'm trying to raise here and, and, and so I get to hang out with them and and we went on a little vacation. I took uh, my wife to Napa for anniversary. She got me into some wine, and Aww. it was great. You guys asked everybody what we did. Okay? <laughs> if either of you, anytime you want to jump in. Well, I spent a lot of time in Texas, like I said. Um, other than that, I mean, the highlight of my off season was the honeymoon. Woo! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Woo! The gutter giants, man. <laughs> No, we went, we went to Tahiti and it was it was an amazing experience. We got to swim with sharks and stingrays. Uh, there were 10, 12 foot sharks that we were diving down and holding onto their dorsal fin, and getting pulled. Are up. you mad? There's nothing against that in your contract. No, something goes wrong. There's more more things to worry about. But um, that was the highlight of my off season. Now, as I said, in Arizona, just enjoying the nice weather, but. I missed uh, miss being in San Francisco a lot. It's my first off season where I spent probably eighty percent of the time away. So it'll be good to be back in April. Uh, mine was pretty boring. It's not that exciting. Aww. I like to spend my time in my house since I'm never there. So uh, I hosted for the holidays. I hosted for Thanksgiving. Actually, we we went back east to see my family for uh, Christmas. So we were gone pretty much from after Thanksgiving to. Uh, Christmas time, we were doing seeing the family because I never get a chance to really see my family. So, a lot of that, and then beyond that, we went to uh, I celebrated my 10 year anniversary. So we went to Belize, and that's pretty cool. I recommend everybody should go to Belize if you want to go. It's a uh, really nice spot to be. So it was fun. And now I'm here at Fan Fest. So there you go. This is it. God damn, he's married too. <coughs> Good lord. Hi guys. Um, my name is Marcus. Are you cold? Uh, yeah, I am. I live in a cold place. <laughs> um, 
Well, I want to just get my dad jealous, so that's why I'm filming this right now, because he took off to go get Buster Posey's autograph, but I wanted to come see you guys. Buster Posey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want to say Nate. Nate the Great. Woo! Um, I will be turning 18 next month, and I was hoping if you can hit a home run. <laughs> what day do I need to hit a home run? Um, well, my parents promised me... Any game in March. So. How about April? What counts? Oh! Uh, Woo! Yeah. Is that a yeah. And I have another question. Um, I wore this hat when you guys won the World Series, and I haven't taken it off ever since. I'm, I'm not lying to you. I'm I was wondering about that smell. Most. I was wondering if if all three of you guys like my hat. Is it honey badger fur? It's, it's faux fur. In that case, I love it. Ah! We have more questions. All right. Run, Cody, run. Don't hurt Going yourself. Of that, do you guys have any, like, what is the weirdest thing you've ever been asked <laughs> to do as a baseball player? You know, sometimes guys come up to you and say, oh my gosh, because you're, you know, eight year old Travier Lopez, I really would like it if you could do this for me. Any strange requests? Or a fan's pretty awesome here in San Francisco. I can't think of any. But... I mean, that was pretty weird, so. I got to put a couple guys in a headlock last year for a photo. It's <laughs> pretty good. Fan fest isn't over, so I'm waiting for it. There's always a request, usually, that she just feel a little awkward about. Go ahead. So, Nate, um, you're my favorite player. I'm probably the only one who has your batting practice jersey. Uh, my boyfriend got it for our anniversary, by the way, so he's pretty cool. But um, do you ever, I know you're pretty fast, do you ever like have races with the other fast guys on the team? And if so, who wins? I really haven't raced anyone. It takes me a few steps to get going, but uh, I'm working on it. I don't think I can keep up with guys like you know Torres in the past or Angel, but you know I do my best and I play you know 100% to uh, you know, make up for me being... Maybe a little bit above average speed wise. That's called the humble response. <laughs> I think he'd be pretty close to uh, Chase and Angel. What do you guys think? Woo! Do you run against each other yet? I don't gallop like he does. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm a huge fan of all three of you, and uh, I was wondering what's your favorite thing to eat before a game? Uh, I eat uh, gluten free crackers, uh, vegetables. Uh, some, you know, depend, you yeah, know, rice. Uh, actually, I eat pizza. I crush pizza. I, I, mean, I eat pizza. I eat all kinds of stuff. You know, I, you know, I, I don't eat very well. <laughs> Probably Amici's East Coast pizza. Yeah, I mean Amici's uh, right? pizza. I yeah. eat Amici's pizza. It's awesome. <laughs> I had the same meal for 162 games. So Boring. I'd say I'm actually not really looking forward to it, but I am. Uh, when the season starts, I do the Elvis. I go peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwich. Good, Good Lord, honey. That's how I roll. And wheat bread, so. And wheat bread. Because that kind of, yeah, I, uh, that, that, that'll cut down the peanut butter. Depends if I'm well. starting that night. I'm right along with Javi. I usually keep it simple. Believe it. Yeah, you see me do it. My <laughs> aren't as perfect as his. <laughs> it's 15 minutes cutting. <laughs> Gotta but take the time. Gotta take the time. I'll go with love to the food. Yeah, I do that sandwich or PB and J. If I'm uh, if I'm not playing, I tend to dive in and stuff myself with our chef's cooking. <laughs> he, he, he cooks pretty healthy here, so I eat as much as I can. So I'm um, not too hungry when you know my pinch hit appearance comes in the summer. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question for Javi. Um, your pitching style is a little different. Did you develop that as a kid, or did you start pitching overhand when you were a kid? I was actually, believe it or not, I was a traditional thrower, uh, even into pro ball. I was drafted as a uh, starting pitcher. I threw over the top like everybody else and had horrendous success. So, uh, if that even makes sense. But anyway, yeah, so uh, I changed it up on my own in uh, double A. 
2002 was the first year I did it, and I was with the Diamondbacks at the time, and they had a uh, young Kim throwing from the right side doing that. They had uh, Mike Myers throwing from the left side doing that, so they didn't have a problem with guys trying new arm angles. So gave it a shot, and uh, the rest is kind of history. The one year I was in the big leagues, uh, the next year, and uh, been up and down since, and then finally figured out what I'm doing. So it's it's been a smoother road as of late, but uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I just kind of tried it on my own, and, and, and it really worked out. Cody? Oh, Cody. All right. All right, so I know that Major League Baseball players usually have kind of different rituals before a game. Like, do you guys have, like, weird routines or anything that you guys do before a game starts? <laughs> I wouldn't say anything weird. Uh, <laughs> well, there are some guys that do some weird stuff. But, uh, like who and what? Pablo was up here, Pablo has this weird... <laughs> thing going. I'm not sure what it is. But, uh, Kissing bots. Can you explain it for us? I, I, Do I tell. would love to, but it's so uh, detailed that I, I, I would I would hate to miss a step and, and, and really do some uh, injustice there. So um, for me, it's come in, the PB, or my uh, Elvis sandwich, knock that out. It's got to be done. Usually about a half hour before the game, a cup of coffee, and... Uh, Depending on how cold it is outside, it might be hot tub time too before uh, before a uh, game. But um, beyond that, that's kind of keep the routine pretty simple, so don't forget any steps. Do you guys have a routine? I don't really have too much of a routine. I'll be in the hot tub. You know, after batting practice, I come in and relax, get some food, and then maybe about a half hour before the game, I get in the weight room and start, you know, maybe bike a little bit, stretch, just get loose. It's cold out here, especially at home. So yes. that's I've just tried to do that to prevent injuries. And uh, head out about 20 minutes before the game. I'm in the batting cage. We take usually take a few flips, um, you know, get our swing loose, and go run a few sprints and get ready to play. I don't do you know I do some stuff for the game, not really. But the fifth inning, I start stretching. I ride a bike. Um, you know, and then I come down, especially in the, I grab a baseball, you know, after the fifth inning and the sixth inning, I usually grab a baseball and start working my grips and start snapping my curveball a little bit just in the air. And then uh, this, you know, the ballpark here, since we don't have a bullpen, uh, we have to sit in the dugout and do it. And it probably annoys some guys, but, you know, we do it, you know. But the first four innings, we don't really do much. We usually pull in pranks. <laughs> uh, each other, fans, all kinds of stuff. Uh, make them, you know, you know I get roasted the entire four innings. <laughs> so, but it's been fun. But other than that, we try to keep it really, really loose. Bullpen guys, we pitch in high pressure situations a lot of times. So, we try to be as loose as possible. Hi, good morning. Um, I know you guys can't probably imagine a career without baseball at this point. But let's go back to when you guys were in high school or, or in college and anticipating, hoping, praying for a draft. What was your, what was your fallback or your uh, a career, your path, just in case that caller didn't come? Well, I signed at a high school, so at 17, I, I had no idea. Uh, I was just, you know, hoping to play baseball. But I was going to go to college if, if that, and that's my mom was a teacher, so I was like, I'm going to college. <laughs> So, you know, but I didn't know. I didn't have a career choice necessarily, uh, what I wanted to do. But So for me, it was just baseball. I was just hoping to make it, and if not, go to college, figure it out. So I really didn't have that idea at the time. I'm getting hungry. I'm pretty much the same as Jeremy. Oh, I, I, I grew up as a kid. Always had a dream of becoming a right now. You know, Major League Baseball player. Went to Tom A's games and always imagined myself on the field one day. So, I mean, I'm blessed that it worked out. I, uh, I was so mad at my mom senior year of high school because I, I had a pretty good year and I had high expectations to get drafted and she was telling all the scouts in the stands, he's going to college, forget about it. <laughs> so I wasn't too happy when I found out a year later, but oh. it was the best thing for me. I, I had a scholarship to go to Utah and I decided not to go because it was too cold. <laughs> um, I, I love the sun, so... I went to uh, Chabot College across the bay, got drafted, and, you know, that was one of the best days of my life. Uh, for me, my, my mom was a high school teacher, so uh, education was always really important in my family, and uh, my dad was an FBI agent, so I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Wow. And so, again, it was kind of like Nate's story, um, 
my dad was like, you're going to college. My mom, you're going to college. So I went to college, so that was it. Uh, and I got drafted out of there, but that was gonna that was my, my plan. I was gonna become an FBI agent, follow my dad's footsteps, and thank God this is the path I went. <laughs> Hi, I'm a big fan of all of you guys. Um, I was wondering specifically your favorite moment of the 2010 postseason, besides winning it all, of course. Uh, that's a great one. Um, <laughs> Obviously, winning it all was great. I think, for me personally, was... I'm going to get this game wrong. Game six, I think. Philadelphia, Sanchi hits Utley. <laughs> and, you know, everything breaks loose on the field. A lot of pushing and shoving. There's never any fighting. So a lot of pushing and shoving and all that. And everybody's too tired by the time you get in from the whole pen. So... <laughs> You know, turning around and seeing Jeremy warming up. Yeah. And, and Gardy, I got, I mean, I give these guys credit. Gardy, Gardy kept them back, got them warmed up, and he really set the tone. And it was a full team effort from then on out. And that's probably my favorite part because I think everybody got to put a, put their time in and chip in in that whole rest of the game. I mean, he throws, uh, gets us out of that inning, throws another couple innings, and then the bullpen, the rest of the bullpen throws that. <clears throat> that was pretty exciting for me. I, I really thought that was a great team one. Yeah. Woo! Um, other than uh, obviously winning it, I thought one of the best moments for me was just watching the people back home, uh, watching the fans after we won. Woo I ran into so many people uh, the last couple of off seasons, showing me YouTube videos and their own home videos of. You know, just the mayhem that was going on here. So that was pretty exciting. Um, it was awesome to celebrate after our games, even though we didn't win, you know, the series at home. It was still pretty special to have our families and everyone involved that, uh, you know, that's been there for us our whole lives and, and has uh, spent so much time, you know, on the sidelines cheering us on. Yeah, I think game six for Philly, for me, uh, a couple reasons, though. One, you know, we have the pitching staff, the starting staff that we have. A lot of times, the bullpen guys don't necessarily always get to participate in these games because they go so deep. The hitters are usually kind of pretty tired. So are the pitchers, but the pitchers sometimes, if they're good, they win out because the stuff beats them. And, and uh, for me, just being able to be a part of a game like that and our bullpen coming in doing what we got to do, that we were, we were a huge part of winning that game. That was a key game that obviously got us the World Series, but no, every, every one of us in that club will tell you we didn't really want to be in Game 7. Uh, against the Phillies in Philadelphia. That would have been a tough one to win. So uh, for me, it was just having that opportunity to be a part of such a big deal and, so I, and, and to get us the World Series and then to win the World Series knowing that that's what the bullpen did. That's what makes us who we are as a bullpen. And I think that's what gave us confidence for last year and uh, gives us confidence probably for the rest of our careers. Timmy punching out 14 didn't hurt yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! If you've got a question, raise your hand, all right? We'll get to you. Hi there. I was wondering, what really goes through all of your heads when the dugout's clear and a brawl comes up? Is it, is it let's just run out there and see what everyone else is doing, or is it, let's go time? Like, what, what do you guys deal with that? I pick up the uh, smallest guy, usually the oldest coach. Woo! Usually the oldest coach on the team try to take him out. Uh, no, I actually try to, I really do try to find my friend, because I'm usually trying to find another friend on the other team, like, I gotta see how his family's doing. Because then you just look like you're angry, and you're like, that's why, why? You know, you try to, you know, you know, play the part, you know, that type of thing. Like, for me, that's what I do. It's all an act, absolutely. Like I said, uh, here it's great because there's no bullpen, so you actually have energy by the time you get out. You know, but, yeah, when, when, when there's a brawl in any other ballpark, you're just like, oh. Because you have to sprint in, and by the time you're in there, everybody's shaking hands, and, and uh, you're, just, you're exhausted. So, yeah, you, you basically try to do what Jeremy said. You just find somebody like, hey, man, what's up? How we good? We going to ha ha having some dinner? Yeah, all right. Talk to you later. All right. It's definitely an adrenaline rush. I mean, you're with these guys all year, your teammates, and they're, you know, they're your family. So you do whatever it takes to protect them. And, you know, it hasn't really come to that since I've been up here. But it's always, uh, it's always something that's kind of fun in a sense. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to ask the last question because we've got to get these guys Aww. on to their other stations today. So the season, spring training, just a couple of weeks away, and then the season begins. What are you most looking forward to? 
Oh man, it's been cold where I live, so I'm just looking forward to getting down in the sun. Uh, I've been throwing indoors, so I'm just looking forward to going down and uh, being with the guys outside. And we're just playing gonna have to wait for the play ball lunch for signatures. Looking forward to another season. I mean, this is what we do for a living. This is what we dream about doing. This is what we pretty much look for. This is what we train for all off season. So to train all off season, we go out and uh, get ready and get on the field. It's gonna be fun to lace up the spikes. So. I'm right there with Jeremy. I mean, it's. As nice as it is after a long season, I have time off. Uh, this off season was much too long for me, and I'm, I'm kind of restless as it is. So I'm excited to get back on the field and, and compete again. You kind of, it's kind of weird when the off season starts. You go through certain phases of maybe mild depression because you know, you're on the field every day for eight or nine months, and then all of a sudden it's nothing. You don't have anything to do, and then three, two or three o'clock rolls around, and you're just kind of like. Game? I have a job. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I think uh, I'm like Jeremy. I live in Colorado and we just got two feet of snow yesterday. So oh, I'm ready for the sun. Get out. Who, what's not to like about Scottsdale, honestly? Whoever's not been there, it's. Um, Woo! Um, it makes for a nice vacation for a lot of people. I know we see a lot of Giants fans down there. So uh, I think everybody's excited to get down there, kind of get back to work and. You know, I think uh, more than anything, it's going to be nice to have everybody back healthy. I'm going to—I'm excited to be able to throw to Buster Posey. I'm excited to watch him. Take I'm excited to watch Freddie Sanchez take one balls at second base. So, you know, these are things we missed last year, and, and hopefully we get back to what we did in 2010. Our Woo! It's worked really well setting off Crew Kipe and Miller since. I know these guys are ready for the season, and you guys are. So let's get our cheer on real quick. It's a thank you for these guys spending the last 45 minutes. Woo! I want to get my favorite cheer when it goes around the ballpark, because it just echoes, is the let's go Giants clap, clap. You guys know that one. Let's go Giants! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're going to do it three times to send these guys off. And unfortunately, no autographs right here because we don't want them to die when everyone crushes them against the wall. So the autograph booths will remain down on the field, and I know that they're headed there later. So three Let's Go Giants, and then just as loud as you can, cheer these guys off the stage, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. Let's Go Giants!